This is Neuroradiology Spotter Set 1. Spotters will be displayed for 30 seconds and answer will be discussed after each spotter. Spotter 1, it spots puffy tumor. It's a complication of acute sinusitis. Usually, it presents as subperiosteal abscess and osteomyelitis, commonly occurring in the frontal bone. So, it is frontal bone osteomyelitis in this case also. It can present as subcutaneous edema. So here we can see this is the focal abscess. So it can be with or without swelling over the overlying scalp. Spotter 2, it's a case of introsious meningioma. 65% of introsious meningioma are osteoblastic, 35% are lytic. CT shows diffuse sclerosis and bone expansion. Here we can see this is contrast enhanced CT showing intracranial portion of uh, the meningioma showing enhancement. Also in bone window we can see that sclerotic bone. Spotter 3, an easy one. This is listen carefully. So there is smooth brain surface without any gyral folds. This is detected antenatally. Classically, we have figure of 8 appearance when taken along sylvian fissure sections. So we can see here no gyral folds are seen. Type 1 has classic listen carefully and uh, type 2 is cobblestone complex. The cobblestone complex will have microgyria. Type 1 will have figure of 8. This is also an antenatally detected neuro anomaly. This is hydranencephaly with destruction of cerebral hemispheres. It is replaced by CSF filled sac with thin layer of uh, cerebrum which is along the skull. So multiple theories are there. It could be due to infarction leading to leukomalacia or diffuse hypoxic injury. So CT shows no remnant cortical tissue or sometimes the residual cortical tissue may be present. There is preserved thalamus and posterior fossa structures. That's because posterior circulation is spared from ischemia. And whatever is destroyed is the anterior circulation structures.
स्पॉटोफाई होलोप्रोजन कैफली केस होलोप्रोजन कैफली मीन्स इनकम्प्लीट सेपरेशन ऑफ बोथ द हेमिसफियर्स राइट एंड लेफ्ट सो देर आर थ्री टाइप्स दैट इज ए लो बार सेमी लो बार एंड लो बार टाइप सो ह्योर दिस इज द लो बार टाइप वे सी टी शोज फ्यूजन ऑफ एंटीरियर फ्रॉन्टल लोब्स एंड थलाम आर फ्यूज सिंगलेट गायरस ऑल्सो मे बी फ्यूज अदर टाइप्स विल नॉट डिस्कस इन डिटेल This was a case of epidermoid cyst occurring due to inclusion of ectodermal elements. Most common location is CP angle. Even our case also it's CP angle. Here we show MR images, T one, T two, and flare images. We can see a lobulated lesion which showing mass effect, and it can also insuniate between the cisterns. On T one, it shows iso intensity to CSF that is hypo. In T two, it is iso intense to CSF, so high signal on T two and low signal on T one. On flare images, it shows incomplete suppression of signal, that is dirty signal, or incomplete suppression of signal. This is the differentiating point between epidermoid cyst and the arachnoid cyst. This is the case of uh, CP angle lipoma. So on MR it shows high signal. So this is T1 image where we can see subcutaneous fat showing high signal, and CSF is uh, in basal cistern is showing low signal. So this is a T1 weighted image. So similar to the fat signal, the lesion also shows a hyper intense signal. So it is a fat attenuation lesion. On T2 it will show high signal again. So on fat saturation sequences it shows signal suppression Spotter eight is a classic example of cortical malformation of grey matter. This is subependymal grey matter heterotrophy, also known as periventricular heterotrophy. Here we can see ectopic location of grey matter. This is not where the grey matter usually is seen. So there are two types. That is focal and diffuse. In focal we have unilateral focal or bilateral focal. Diffuse is of course bilateral. And these grey matter nodules. will follow gray matter signal on all mri sequences as the name suggests it is gray matter heterotrophia In spotter nine, we have vein of Galen malformation. This is arteriovenous fistula of median prosencephalic vein, which is a precursor of vein of Galen, occurring at six to eleven weeks. So arteriovenous fistula. The vein is median prosencephalic vein, and the arteries are the choroidal arteries. On MRI, this is a T two uh, sequence image shown. This is the vein of Galen in black, shown as flow void. on mri 
we can also see mass effect on aqueduct causing hydrocephalus as a complication the other complication or the symptomatic complication is it causes high output cardiac failure for the patient because it's an arteriovenous fistula Last case we have Sturge Weber syndrome, also known as encephalo trigeminal angiomatosis. The name itself defines the syndrome. It is a triad of port vein nevus occurring in trigeminal nerve territory, usually on the face. Next we have ocular hemangioma. Also we have leptomeningeal hemangiomas. This is shown in the CT image in our spotter. These hemangiomas calcify causing chiral calcification also causing chiral atrophy. So these are tram track calcification classic. So later it will progress to hemi atrophy. Calvarial hyperostosis can be seen on the same side. Like, share and subscribe you, uh, radiology doodles on YouTube and Instagram for more such videos.